I'm going to thank you right out of the gates. Something you didn't know, but you've been with me all week. <laughs> thank you so much for being with me all week because I had you in mind while I was tackling the chores to get the Deep South ready so that my Ingrecums would have a nice tidy area to have their glam camping season in. But it was a lot of work and unfortunately I physically cannot do it anymore all in one fail swoop. But because you were on my mind, I kept plugging and pulling and snipping away so that these beauties, as you see them in November of 2023, are now in position, ready for their glam camping season of 2024. But you see, there's not only that one little section of the hedge that I have to deal with in the deep south, the whole top perimeter of the west side hedge also needs to be dealt with, first of all, because of all the debris that falls out, which includes all the pests that make their home in there, like scale, mealybugs, and aphids. So on very, very brief breezy days, I do not want my angracoids just new outside in their new home getting showered on with whatever critter is coming out of the hedge. And I plugged away at this area in stages as well. And then finally the day had arrived, one day delayed simply because I was pooped, I couldn't do anymore. And we got to this stage and I just hope that you stick around, watch the video, give it a thumbs up and follow the process of what has by now become tradition on my channel when my angrecums come out of their winter holding space back into the great outdoors and freedom. I always try to have a comparison from when I pull them out of the hedge to when I bring them in. So you can see on the left hand side, the root system of 2023, that was mid-November. And on the right hand side, the root system, as it is on the day that they were taken out of the grow space and do a comparison to see what has survived. And usually I wipe the leaves down completely, but the roots are so long they're getting in my way and then I figured that well they're not used to that bright light and I think dust actually will protect them a little bit before they have really acclimated. So I only did a few leaves. I didn't wipe the whole orchid down but what I don't like is the fact that the moss always dies during the winter. That's normal because I am still feeding these orchids with calcium nitrate just to tide them over. Cow mag as well and it's all a bit too much for the moss because the moss doesn't get much light either. I don't care about the moss, it'll grow back, but I always do some trimming, pruning, cleaning, and very carefully try to avoid any kind of roots that may have grown into that space. I don't want to expose any roots because I also have magpies that are going to find these roots very interesting and probably pick at them thinking they're worms. So when I do discover a root tip, I then quickly cover it up with moss again in the hopes that they won't find it. I'm usually not that lucky and they do destroy root tips but that is the nature of the game when growing outdoors. And of course the weeding. I love the process of weeding. Never mind that I have this beast of an orchid in my face as I fuss around the pot but oh to get some of the ferns out. I always do try to get them with roots but it's never really a guarantee but at least let the base of the cakey breathe a little bit because things are gonna get a little bit wet. Moving forward without any worries so I don't want the worry of ferns around there. Speaking of cakeys, oh, I have a surprise for you. But before I ever get to that stage, I'm always looking at the root system. But before I get to that stage, once the moss is gone, then you can see the salt buildup because of my fertilizer levels that I do put in. The orchid is huge. And then yes, I do get crusty salt on there. But this orchid has also been in this pot now since 2018. So the salt buildup is not just because of one winter, it is just an accumulation. I do try to scrub off as much as I can without scrubbing into any roots as well. So it gets more and more cumbersome, but we do give it a go every once in a while, you know, at least once a year. <laughs> And then the misting of the roots is to see what is alive, what is dead, because yes, I can see wrinkled roots and I can identify them as dead, but I try to snip back as much dead as possible, which gives me a fresh start for what I can then determine is good root growth throughout the coming months when it is time to pull the orchid out of the hedge again. And of course, to assess what made it through the winter. And I'm always very surprised, very happy that I don't have more root die back. And I was super interested this time around because at the end of the day, I had TNC Mycohydro in the dish that was providing some kind of humidity for these orchids. And some of the root tips that came out of the hedge in 2023 went into that dish 
with the TNC microhydro. And I'm not entirely sure if I'm actually looking at mycorrhizae. And I thought I'm just going to take this picture. I have two other roots that also show these little hairy bits, but I think mycorrhizae are microscopic. My eyes aren't that good. This, however, fascinated me. Anyway, the root is dead, whether that is because of the TNC microhydro or because the water is too cold or whatever reason it is, it doesn't really matter. The orchid is not lacking any roots. And every year when it comes time to put the roots back into the hedge, I am always ready and I accept the fact that I am ready to eventually have to cut these long roots off in order to accommodate this orchid in that space. It's getting harder and harder every year as you can imagine and <laughs> as you will see and yes I am narrating this indoors because it was such a windy day when I was doing this there was so much noise outside there was sunshine so everybody wanted to partake in the beautiful weather and the wind with the microphone so I hope that you are still able to follow along with what is going on as if we were in real time it's just so much more convenient for me to do it this way considering what kind of spring game was going on on the patio on that day but I wasn't gonna wait another day my body told me I'm not gonna drop an orchid today and that's when I said all right today's the day <laughs> but before that I also have to put up like a bedding a sheet bedding or something <laughs> between my angrecums and the neighbors because they come with their watering hose to water their plants in that corner on their side of the garden and it spills over splashes over to my side to the angrecums and our tap water is horrible. At least this sheet catches 99% of the spray and protects my angraecums from that nasty water, which I don't even use because I use RO water. So when it was time to put these back into the hedge, I started with the Crestwood because physically that is the most difficult one with all the long roots that it has and all the branching roots that it has. And I thought what I was going to do is come from above and thread the roots into the hedge. And it kind of worked, but I miscalculated how high I was coming in as opposed to the final level of the orchid on that egg crate. So it was, it was a fiddle. And before I did a lot of damage, I stepped back took a breath and we went in for a second go. Now, in hindsight, I feel a little bit like an idiot because I have this wonderful Velcro material given to me by Trisha's Orchid Life. I could have bundled the roots up and tried to put them in all together. Well, I only thought of that afterwards. It was a little bit too late for that because at the end of the day, I was bundling the roots anyway with my hand, guiding them through the fence. And then it's just a question of, are you gonna go? Where is there a kink? I already snapped a root during the winter. Unfortunately, when I lost my balance, I brushed up against that one long root and I snapped it. So I thought, well, if it's not gonna make it, then I'll just cut it off. But I figured I'm just gonna give it a go and see how far I can get. now. I heard several cracklings and you can see the tension sometimes on the roots as I move the pot forward and nudge it forward bit by bit. There's a lot of tension on some of the roots, but I cannot also have this orchid out too far simply because <laughs> you will see. Hopefully, if you subscribe to the channel and have not seen this yet, but during the months where the sun is very high in the sky, I get out a beach umbrella in order to protect these from the direct sun. So yeah, please subscribe to the channel. It would be wonderful to have you here following the journey of my beautiful angraecums in the deep south. It's always such a special time of year for me to bring them out and I'm always excited to share all this with everybody that already knows how this works. But if you're new here, oh, please, subscribe I would so appreciate it thank you so much but I did fuss after filming I did fuss a little bit more with the tension with the orchid moved her a little bit more into the patio so there is still some tension on the roots but for the most part they are inside and I'm just going to hope she's not too far away from the hedge that she will still grow some beautiful roots that are gonna go into the direction of where the higher humidity is and that would be in the hedge and then came the easy part because my Angrecum sesquipedale variety bossery, those roots, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward with the exception of one root tip that branched last year. So thank you, but no thank you. When I got that orchid into the hedge, yes, there was still some tension on the branching. I may lose one side because it is a really bit of a tight squeeze in there. I did get them through the wire, but once you are further into the hedge, there's all kinds of debris and grasses and things that 
are growing that I can't reach and pull out. So once that branching root system there reached that part, I could feel that the one on the right, yeah, I'm not comfortable with that. But for the most part, the orchid is also in the hedge. And this one is so lanky and a bit top heavy that when it comes to tying her off, there's always a bit of a problem here because she needs to be sturdy, otherwise she is going to fall over. It is extremely windy in that corner sometimes, especially this time of year. So yeah, you can see there's a lean on the pot and you know, there's still more fussing to be done and eventually I got it right. But at least she's not that complicated to get into the hedge compared to the crest wood. <laughs> This winter, I did not lose a root on her. All the roots that were soaking in the bowl throughout are still stiff as nails. They all are brown and nasty looking, but they're alive, so that's important. As you can see, this orchid is not exactly the most generous root grower, so it's getting harder and harder to hydrate this orchid. I don't know how to rethink this whole setup. <laughs> because the roots, as you can see, are not exactly like, oh, look, there's a pot. Let's go down there. No, nope, it's just out. Let's just go out everywhere, as they should grow if they were in the right climate. And then, of course, what I really love doing once I get them in position, apart from taking a deep breath, stepping away, collecting myself, <laughs> is just to fuss around, clean the orchid tops, and then see what develops throughout the growing season as far as moss is concerned. And yes, seeing as the hedge has now been cleaned up above, and of course there are still critters in there because I don't use any pesticides to get rid of them, I make sure that all the crowns and everything of my orchids are protected and a little bit of garlic alcohol goes in. But I did forget something right at the beginning. I want to show you where I put a black dot on the apex of the leaf of the crest wood on the day that the orchids came indoors in November of 2023 to monitor the progress, how much growth there has been during the six months whilst they were indoors. And you can see it's not much. <laughs> so now I also have a second dot. I've done it again on the same side. You can't see it, but once they were in the hedge, I went with my Sharpie and put another dot into the apex of where the leaf comes out of the apex and I put a second dot. So in November of this year, when we pull them out of the hedge, we are going to have a look and see how that leaf has grown, plus other things. And of course, here they will get a lot of light, a lot of reflecting light from the facade. They will be protected by an umbrella, probably in another four weeks, especially late afternoon. The sun is already showing a little bit on the crestwood leaf, because now this orchid is so much higher than it used to be. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be fun. Anyway, this is their status quo for the next six months. And while everything looks somewhat clean and tidy now, it's gonna look nasty in six months because that is it. I don't do anything in that corner apart from maybe sweep a little bit. I don't move them. I don't go behind them. I don't take out anything that has grown in them. I just let things happen. And as you can see, my boss tree is still very, very dirty. But just like with the crestwood at the beginning, I opted not to wipe the leaves just yet because the glaucus effect is also a form of protection. Last year when I was wiping the leaves and I was all proud of myself, I put them into their place. One of the newer leaves of the sesquipedale showed some kind of cold damage. It was almost as if coming out of the indoors, going into the outdoors, having been wiped down, the breeze is still a little bit cool in the shade. It's not a warm breeze. It appears to me to be like a little bit of a cold burn, so they can have all their natural fertilizer on the leaves, thanks to the wild birds that visit Ciliano, so they can just stay dirty for now. Besides, I do love the glaucus effect. No, I don't like dirty leaves, but if it helps to protect the leaves until they've hardened off, then so be it. I'm absolutely fine with that. It's not for lack of light or anything. It's because of the light that we're keeping the dust on and possibly to avoid any of that cold burn from repeating itself. And because I still have a few low nights, low nights for me that are uncomfortable, so I think that they will be uncomfortable, we'll be using the woolly blanket trick again just to protect them and keep them nice and cozy. And now let's get the grow on. And you know what I completely
completely forgot to tell you. Well, I'm so glad you're still here because I have a second keiki growing at the base of my crest wood. It started four weeks ago. So you see one keiki has developed and that keiki is approximately two years old now. It has its own little root system in the pot, which is awesome because that is going to help the mother plant as well. But we have a second keiki growing. Isn't that super cool? I love it. And we'll have a look, see how that starts to grow this season as well. So a few things that I forgot to mention at the beginning, I remembered at the end. I hope I didn't forget everything that I wanted to tell you <laughs> while I was actually getting this done. But if I did, I'll mention it in the comments, which I look forward to hearing from you. And once again, thank you so, so much for helping me through this week, for getting this job done and for watching. I wish you a beautiful day on the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Yes, yes, of course. What is this all about? <laughs> well, this is not just to tickle me pink, but it's also the way of getting them to bloom again in December or January. Let's just say the winter of 24, 25, but we're not gonna think about that right now. We're just going to <laughs> cartwheels around the patio. Bye.